welcome back. Mm, welcome back. Hi, good morning. <laughs> good morning. Welcome to Let's Talk Autism with Shannon and Nancy. I'm Nancy Allspot Jackson. And I'm Shannon Penrod. How you doing? Good to be here with you. Good I to missed be here last with you. week. I was on the on a cliff on the side of Malibu instead of being here with you at a, at a yeah. retreat. And it was a card fun retreat. Times. A good. card retreat. It was a very good time. I think we were building a boat okay. right about now. Learning about teamwork. Yes. Sink or swim. Yeah, pretty much. Did you pretty did you much. sink or swim? Um, I think I sunk on that one. You did. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think I got leopard sinker. going on here. You've got I, blue you know, and black I leopard. got this shirt just because you talk <laughs> about wearing animal prints all the time, and I and whenever you we, we always have a Vulcan mind meld that we wear the same thing, except we when do. you wear animal prints, and I don't have any animal and prints. And so now you do. And so and I got I got here. this shirt, and I decided to wear it that it was Animal Print Day, and see, I got it right. It is animal. It print is day. animal print day. Every day Vulcan, is animal print day for me. Vulcan mind meld. Yeah. Okay. Um, Okay. It, it helps me be fierce when I'm not feeling fierce, when I'm feeling more like a mouse than a, than a lion. I tell okay. you, it's a hard time of year. Can we just can we just can like we put everything can aside we please? and say that, like this is a an exciting time of year because the possibilities are endless yes. and it's back to school and it's all that. But I think it's a harder time than ever for autism parents mm -hmm. because it means everything has changed. Yeah, um, and then everybody has more stuff going on. In, in the end of August and September. I don't know why, mm -hmm. but it's always a bumpy, bumpy time. September, I always consider September the beginning of the year. I think when people yes. say January, forget it, September. Yeah. yeah. And uh, why it started high school this year, which was totally overwhelming to me because being now a single parent, um, I was like, how am I going to deal with this? And you know what? I'm doing it one day at a time because. Um, I don't know. It's being, you know, it is tough being a single parent. And I mean, I Can't know there's single parents out there probably saying, oh, well, you know, I've been doing this for, you know, years on my own. But when you're suddenly a single parent yeah. because of the death of a spouse, it's, wow, you really start to appreciate the things your spouse did. Never take for granted the things your spouse did. I say that to every one of my friends that still has a living husband. Yeah. Never Any take time for I, I start to grouse at my husband, <laughs> then at some point I squeeze him and go, you know, thank you, I appreciate you. And I know, I always tell you that. And he's heard a couple of times, okay, in Reed's name, I'm not gonna be ticked about this. He's yes, heard exactly, that. exactly. <laughs> name, so I'm many things you don't know that your spouse takes care of, including yeah. taking your kid to school, doing homework, overseeing yeah. everything with co-parenting. Absolutely. You know. So anyway, Wyatt's doing great, though. We have a he. He's got the most gifted teacher this year he's ever had, and she's got a new program at Agora High, uh, social communication. And I want to get her on the show. Yes, we her have, name to have is her on Vicky the show. Willig, and she is absolutely the best teacher he's ever had. And I met so, her and was very impressed. She's with her. so impressive. So, but it is a stressful time for all of you IEPs and back to school and you new teachers. You should have heard the questions that we had in the first hour with Ask Dr. Doreen. I mean, it was like the full the full gamut. You know, I don't want to go back to school. Right. A child who doesn't want to poop at school. Right. If you guys missed that hour, go back and watch it because Dr. Grampuche had a lot of good it's stuff. It's so to say. stressful for our kids. It is stressful for our kids, and that and any time it's stressful for our kids, it's stressful for us. Yeah. And, um, I mean, let's face it. We're only as good as our children are doing. That's what I I, I say. I gauge everything by how Wyatt's doing. Amen to that, sister. Okay. All, All right. right. In the news, we've got so, some very interesting stories here. We do. Do you want to start with the spraying? Yeah. Well, aerial spraying to combat mosquitoes is linked to increased risk of autism. And we all know that aerial spraying is going on heavily right now in certain areas of the country because of Zika. Yes. Um, and just so you know, uh, when I first saw this article, I was like, okay, who? I always want to know who is this coming from, right? This is coming from the American Academy of Pediatrics, and from uh, and they are getting it from the Pediatric Academy Societies (PAS). Um, so this is, you know, right at the top. American Academy of Pediatrics, when they say this is going on, you have to figure. Um, it's pretty credible yeah. um, that there's new research that is showing that use of airplanes to spray anti-mosquito pesticides may increase the risk of autism spectrum disorder and developmental delays among children. Um, so they, they took a look at a swampy region in central New York where they've been using uh, airplanes to spray uh, pyrethroid. Have you mm -hmm. heard of pyrethroid before? I have not. 
Um, and and they've been spraying it every term. summer. The these particular pesticides target mosquitoes that carry eastern equine encephalitis virus, which we also don't want that, no. right? Yeah. Uh, that can cause swelling of the brain and of the spinal cord. Mm -hmm. They found that children living in the zip codes in which the aerial pesticide spraying was taking place during the summer since 2003 were approximately 25% more likely to have autism spectrum or documented developmental delay compared to those in zip codes with other meth methods of pesticide distribution. That's a huge number. That's a huge number. And um, so, and especially with all this Zika, I, I would go so far as to call it hysteria, and I mm -hmm. understand why people are so concerned about it, but there's more and more spraying going on than ever before. Mm -hmm. I think it's something that parents need to be aware of. Mm -hmm. We need to start asking questions. Um, you know, it is within your right to call your uh, local um, city council and ask them when are you doing aerial spraying and mm -hmm. ask to be on a list to be notified of when they're doing it. I think we need to make an effort to keep our children in when that's happening. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure that we're washing their hands more often after it happens, mm -hmm. changing our air conditioner filter and our heater filter mm -hmm. after that happens. Mm -hmm. we, I, I think we owe it to ourselves to just be a little bit more aware and a little bit more knowledgeable about when and if it's happening near us. Because right. I think I'm oblivious where we live about, you know, there are there are times when I've woken up and, and are like there's just a weird weird uh, sparkly haze mm -hmm. in our neighborhood and mm -hmm. I go, oh, I'll bet they sprayed during the night mm. and nobody told me. Right. Um, but yeah, something they, it's not like they put out notices on that. Right. Yeah. But you can ask to be informed. Okay. And it's something that um, I know also at your child's school, mm -hmm. um, I recently, this, this year, in fact, for the first time asked, I had to fill out a form to be notified at the school district anytime that they're going to be using pesticides. Oh, because okay. before that, they just would uh, post something on the wall and right. if you noticed it, you noticed it. But I asked to be put on a list so that they have to notify me now okay. when they're going to do pesticides. Okay. So, so obviously this is going to be more probably in swampy regions. Uh, well, because it said it identified a swampy region in central New York where, where health officials used airplanes to spray the pesticides. And, but this was from 2003. And if, okay. if we look at it now in uh, terms of who is going to be using aerial pesticides because of Zika, I right. think it's going to be much right. more widespread. And interesting, you said uh, Zika hysteria. Uh, I do find that, uh, and having worked in television for, for 25 years of my life prior to working in autism uh, nonprofit, um, there is a certain um, hysteria and jumping on the bandwagon of hysteria when it comes to certain things. Yeah. And Zika does certainly seem to be one of them right now. And I remember when the measles outbreak happened and there was actually a clip in the movie Vaxxed of Diane Sawyer saying, measles on the march. They try to come up with these little right. catchy terms for their- Things you can hashtag. Yes, which yeah. you can hashtag and which in the opening of a show, um, they call it the teaser. Right. Uh, for the news, for you know any of the entertainment shows, you'll notice they hype what's coming on. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes the way they hype it doesn't even live up to the story. So be aware of that because there's a lot of hype in the media. Um, there really isn't, and I will say this as an opinion, uh, there really isn't true journalism anymore. No, um, as soon as it's all tied to ratings, how It's can tied there to be? ratings and, you know, the Edward R. Murrows are gone and the Mike Wallaces are gone because all of the major media is owned by big corporations. So anything you're seeing on news has been filtered through management, upper management. So it's not necessarily the truth. So I just want to be, you know, I want to caution yeah. everybody. That's, you know, <laughs> yes. my warning for the day. That Absolutely. if you see it on the, on the nightly news, it doesn't mean it's true. Right, and just uh, because sadly. it's on the internet doesn't mean it's oh, true. Well, even either. more so, even right. more so. Okay. Um, which brings us to our next story, uh, a story in Forbes. Uh, the title of it is, Let's Take a Look at Autism Ultrasound Link. Okay. Um, and we had covered on, this, on the show a couple of months ago 
uh, a story about there being a possible link between ultrasound in the first trimester of pregnancy and risk for autism because they had found a mathematical link showing that kids, uh, babies that had multiple ultrasounds in the first trimester seemed to be more likely to be on the autism spectrum. Correct. But this writer, um, Emily Willingham, who writes for Forbes and writes a lot of pieces on autism, and I don't always agree with her, but she, what I do like is that she takes things apart right, and says, okay, this is what they're saying, but let's take it apart mm -hmm. a little bit. And mm -hmm. I appreciate that she, I don't always like the conclusion that she draws, mm -hmm. but in this case, I think uh, it's, a, it's a worthy read. Okay. Um, and so that's Forbes.com. Um, let's take a look at that autism ultrasound link. And it, the interesting thing, as you pointed out, is um, women that have ultrasounds have more of a reason to believe there may be an issue with their pregnancy. Yeah. When you get pregnant, um, the, you know, there's usually a pretty early ultrasound sound that they want to do to mm -hmm. see that there's a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. And then they don't want to pay for it after that. Right. right? They, like, and that's really, I think, what it comes down to is that there's no reason to pay for it and they don't want to pay for it. But there are times when there are extenuating circumstances for reasons why they're willing to pay for an early ultrasound. And so she's saying here in this piece, if we look at that, maybe it's not the ultrasound. Maybe the reason why they're getting the ultrasound is the reason why these people are more likely to have autism. Right. That maybe it's, in my case, we had so many ultrasounds. I have a, you know, a, a photo album that's just ultrasound pictures, mm -hmm. but it was because I was 40 and had right. gestational As diabetes a, yeah. and they and I'd already had a pretty um, horrific miscarriage so they were looking all the time right older uh, women have obviously more uh, it's suggested uh, more frequently if you're older because uh, traditionally down syndrome yeah. was linked to uh, older women in pregnancy right and there were um, and there are so many other things we my mother was born clubfoot mm -hmm. both of her feet were backwards when mm -hmm. she was born so they were looking to see that his feet were forming properly so right. we were looking all the time. I mean, I was going in on a weekly basis going, are we going to look this week? You know, we looked all the time. But maybe it's not the ultrasound. Maybe it's that I'm older. Maybe mm -hmm. it's that I, you know, genetically am predisposed to, mm -hmm. you know. So I, I, but I think it's a really interesting read and raises some interesting questions from M Emily Willingham. Uh, and that's again in Forbes.com. And before you panic and think, oh, I should never get an ultrasound, uh, give it a read to see. But I do think if you don't have risk factors, you know, right. get, you know, why not get fewer? And then, of course, the big story of the week that just, it keeps, um, it, it's the story that keeps on going. Uh, we saw, the, all of us saw the picture on Facebook of the Florida State receiver who sat down at the lunch table with the boy and decided to have lunch with him because nobody else was having lunch with him. Cool. And now he's gone further than that and given the boy his jersey and given the family tickets to come to the game and... I love a good story like this. Me too. And I and I really want to say thank you to Travis Rudolph for stepping up, seeing something, stepping in, then being willing to take pictures and willing to take it further because the awareness is going further. Right. But I will say that I thought the biggest quote about this came from Autism Daddy, and I know a lot of you guys follow Autism Daddy, um, the blogger, and he said, oh, I just love this, but you know what I'm going to love more? the day when a story like this is so mundane that nobody would cover it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Yeah. I know. The the thought of the the boy um, sitting Bo, Paskey, mm -hmm. sitting alone in the cafeteria broke my heart. Yeah. Yeah. And now he's popular because somebody who's a big sports star befriended him. Why yeah. does it take that? Yeah. That's what I'd like to know. Yeah. I'd like to see the day when a child can be befriended not because somebody famous befriended yeah. him. Yeah. There was a there was a story that we posted on our Facebook 2 weeks ago and it's an old story. It's like 2 years old. But I put it up there because a lot of people are going back to school and that back to school thing is hard, yeah. especially when we're putting our kids in with other kids and we mm -hmm. wonder how they're going to be treated. Yeah. And it's a search for it. It was two weeks ago on our Facebook, and it's a story about um, a group of kids that are um, elementary age and on a, a football team 
with uh, a young man who has autism mm -hmm. who was the water boy mm -hmm. and they all got together and worked it out so that he could have an opportunity to make a touchdown. And this story, I mean, there have been lots of stories since this one of kids that let the kid win the race right, or, right, right. or done whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a beautiful interview with one of the neurotypical boys uh -huh. where he, you know, he's like trying so hard to be cool, but he starts to cry. Oh. And he says, I didn't think about him. And I didn't know what a big deal it would be to him. And I have things like that every day. And I didn't think about it. He said, I kind of went along with it because everybody else was doing it. But after I saw how much it meant to him, he said, it really changed my mind about what's important. Mm -hmm. <sighs> right? right? Worth watching. You know, I have my own Travis Rudolph in our life. Um, we have a neighbor, Craig Shoemaker. A lot of people know yes. Craig. He's a pretty well-known comedian. Yeah. Uh, funny guy. Does a great Barney Fife and has a, had a, a show called Datitude, uh, mm -hmm. a comedy special. And he's got four kids. And his oldest son, uh, Justin, is the captain of the football team at Agora High. Now, Justin has been... Wyatt's personal trainer for about a year That's great. and he is absolutely darling kid just so handsome so mature and he trains Wyatt two days a week and he just has such a heart yeah. And, you know, he, he was talking to Wyatt the other day. He goes, where do you hang out, dude? I want to come over and see you, you know, during school and find you on campus, you know. Cause, and I'm sure when Justin shows up, everybody's going to be like, whoa, yeah. you know. But um, that Craig and his wife Mika raised Justin to have that kind of, you know, sweetness and concern. Uh, it yeah. just comes natural to him, and it means a lot. And it's so important that we try to identify these kids, reinforce them for it, um, and let them know what a great job that they're doing. But but to have that, because that makes Wyatt bullyproof. Yeah, definitely. Even when he's not there, yeah. the, if the kids see that... The coolest kid on campus is his yeah, pal. He's given the stamp of approval, yeah. and so they know... Okay, I can't mess with that kid. He's not the one to mess with. Right. He's not the the wildebeest that's at the end of the you know that the lion can pounce on. Right. And that's important for yeah. our kids. Yeah. Super duper important. Sure is. And if you haven't found that yet, uh, try to find it. Yeah. See if you can look, befriend a cool kid that would you know be there for your kid. Absolutely. Yeah. And you didn't know when you found him that no. he was going to be that. I had no idea um, he was like the coolest kid around. Yeah. So sometimes they're there and right underneath your nose. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we should take a break now, but we have a great guest. Mm -hmm. uh, Don Palazzo is with us. And my understanding is that he is, and Amy has confirmed it for me because I didn't know, okay. but you knew, he's the Visionary uh, recip uh, Award recipient for this year's d, &D. He's getting the Visionary Award, and he is uh, he's, he has supported us he, in his company. Mm -hmm. It's a mouthful. We'll let him talk about his company. Yes. Um, they have supported us. Their law firm has supported us. Uh, for many years has supported Act Today, and we're going to find out why someone of his stature uh, in the community would get behind a charity like Act Today and help kids that can't afford and access services and treatment get it. Uh, what makes him do that? And maybe it'll inspire some other business owners out there who are listening to do the same. So we'll be back in just a minute with more. You say hi. Hi, it's Lisa Ackerman back for What's Left. I got a nice guest with me today. Hi, I'm Kristen. We're going to make some healthy uh, banana nut bread um, with no eggs. Maybe what you could do, Kristen, I'm going to add the flour. Okay. If you can uh, get the bananas ready uh, just by mashing them for me. So I'm going to go ahead and add our flour. Here's one cup of my all-purpose flour. I'm gonna go ahead and add my baking soda and my salt and my xanthan gum. A half teaspoon of the salt, one teaspoon of baking soda, and xanthan gum. Xanthan gum is great, but the, you can also use gar gum. Uh, we can use flaxseed meal if we wanna use a different binder. Remember, this is what helps keep your gluten-free flour held together. We're going to also add one cup of our organic cane sugar. There's a lot of variations on this as well. Um, I can use maple syrup and honey and cook with it. Um, that's a great way to go. 
Uh, but be careful, you may need to add some more flour into the mix. How are you doing, monkey? I think. <laughs> I think I did Perfect. It. I can now say I officially mashed bananas. <laughs> you mashed the monkey <laughs> bananas. So I'll go ahead and take your mashed okay. monkey banana. <laughs> Thank you very much. All we did, Kristen, lovely Vanna White, um, is mash up the bananas getting ready to go for our dessert. So let's go ahead and add egg replacers. We've gotten a lot of feedback from y'all about not using eggs, and I know eggs are a big issue. So we talked about this. Um, we're going to use a little flaxseed meal and arrowroot starch, and I love these, but whenever we use a dry ingredient, and you know an egg has a lot more moisture than these, yeah. so we want to be a little kind and maybe add a little water okay. or more fruit or you know a coconut milk or something along those lines so for this recipe it calls for two eggs so i'm actually going to use one teaspoon of each of these look at me using measuring devices and add that into my mix and um, that will be in replace of any eggs that you would want in that recipe next up is the cinnamon and the nutmeg this gives it the yum now uh, for kids who are really sensitive to to um, different spices, you may want to go a little lighter on these. So um, for nutmeg, this calls for an eighth of a teaspoon, so you really want to go light on the nutmeg. Um, in fact, that's one you could probably cut back a little bit for kids who are really sensitive to smell or taste. And cinnamon, I love cinnamon. Did you know cinnamon has some antibacterial it properties? Did. Yeah. I love this stuff. So anytime I can add cinnamon to whatever, if your kid tolerates it, it's a great antibacterial, so I love that stuff. If you have a nut allergy, forget the nuts, but these are uh, the chopped walnuts per the recipe. This is a half cup of chopped walnuts, and I've got my lemon zest. Mm. And again, I love lemon zest. My son has grown to love it as I cook for him more often. And then the last thing that we're going to add here in our recipe is the half a cup of oil. Thanks, Anna you White. You're welcome. And we'll go ahead. I use grape seed. You can also use the, um, the different um, earth balance soy-free margarine melted, oh, oh, okay. that would be great. That gives a good texture. Awesome, our mix is ready to go, Kristen. I'm gonna put a little oil on the pan. And I love the consistency. Like you were saying, this looks a little bit like a thick pancake mix. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? I think so, I just wanna make sure I'm not the <laughs> one that doesn't make it come out. So again, it is a bit of a thicker texture. I'm going to go ahead and grab as much as I can out of my little mixing pan here. Mm. So let's go ahead and All put right. this in the oven, 350 degrees for about 40 to 50 minutes, depending upon your oven and how long you want it to cook. Ooh. And this is what the finished product looks like. Yum. Mm -hmm. Looks so yummy. for me, this is probably one of the most nutritious, fun things that I can eat. I'm going to have you try some Ooh. so you can tell me what you think. I'll and be happy to be the guinea pig. <laughs> Such Ooh, a great it smells texture. so good. So there you go. Yummy. I know. But go ahead and give it a shot and <laughs> tell me what you think. Let me see. That was really good. Yeah. It's moist that. too. Thank you for joining us here at Autism Live. We've got a great, wonderful snack or breakfast um, that we can serve up for our kids. That's healthy, ready to go. Kristen, thanks for joining me Thank this time. Thank you for having me. Love having fun. you here. And we'll see you next time at Autism Live. What's left? If you have any questions, you can email us at autismlive at gmail.com or hit us up on Facebook, facebook.com slash autismlive. And if you need more recipes while we're in between shows, go off to the TACA website, tacanow.org. Click on gluten-free, casein-free, soy-free recipes and have a ball. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys. You say howdy, we say hi. Let's get right, let's get wild. Right. Let's get, let's get, let's get wild. Right. And we are back. And as we said, we have a special guest. We have Don Palazzo. Is it Palazzo or Palazzo? It could be either, but I use Palazzo. Okay, Palazzo. And Don, you are one of the principals of Nevers, Palazzo, Packard, Wildermuth, and Winner. That's correct. I made Good Nancy job. say because okay. I would have slaughtered it. Okay, <laughs> at, at a law firm out of Westlake Village, California. Uh, you were founded in 1992. And tell us about a little bit about your firm and what you do. Our firm was formed by people who worked at big firms and lived out in the Westlake Village area and mm -hmm. got tired of driving to West from Westlake Village to Century City in Santa Monica. Yeah. And we saw a need for um, a lot of middle market companies who were in the area. And in fact, 
throughout the Southland who are looking for sophisticated representation by people with big firm experience, but without the layers of fees, expense, and people involved. Because oh. they're dealing with complicated deals with some of those big right. companies and they need yeah. to be helped. Okay, great. And uh, you are being honored this year at our 11th annual Denim Diamonds and Stars for Autism with the Visionary Award. And congratulations on Thank that. Thank you very much. Very um, and you have supported uh, Act Today and Denim and Diamonds in particular for a number of years, which is why you're being honored this year. Um, why, why have you supported? I mean, you, you know, no business leader, no uh, firm really needs to support a charity. Why? Well, there are a lot of charities out there that are looking for support, and we support many through our firm. But this one really resonated with us. All of our partners are um, parents. We all have children, and we've all gone through challenges of being a parent at different times. And with empathy, you know, some of us have, have spouses who are special ed teachers or other teachers. We've had some connection with that. And we've seen a lot of times whenever an issue comes up for a parent to say, okay, my kid's having a problem. You want to do whatever you can to figure out what the problem is. Then you say, okay, here it is. You have a label. Okay, what do I do about it? Then you find out, okay, here's, there's all these conflicting things. Now I've figured out what are the resources I need? How do I get there? You find that out. Then you say, great, let me do it. Price is no object. But for most people, price is an object. And there are so many people who, you know, you just imagine the frustration of saying, this is my kid, the clock is ticking, I know there's help out there, and I need resources, what can I do? So that really strikes a chord with all of us to say, how do we help connect those people with resources, not with layers of bureaucracy, but with immediate help that we know can make an immediate impact that will be of lifelong benefit. Well, and if anybody had any uh, questions about why you're getting the Visionary Award, you just answered it so <laughs> eloquently, right? Uh, and I got to say, as an autism parent, that it, it, you know, we, we love it when companies recognize and, and commit and put their checkbook where their mouth is, right, and say we're going to help to support and make a difference. Um, but we also love it. A lot of times, the corporations that say that they're going to do that, uh, they're parents of children who are on the autism spectrum. And that's not you. And I got to say, I kind of love that even more, Don, that you see this without having to have gone through it. So, on behalf of all of us, thank you. Well, it's, it's really our pleasure. It's, it's as I said, it's, it's something that. You know, doing something like this does more for you to feel good about what you're doing and making a contribution. And so the Denim Diamonds event is just so great for that because it's people there who have a commitment, who are, you know, recognized for making a contribution, want to do more to contribute, and to be in a room with other people feeling the same way. So that's just, you know, it's a lot more, you know, they say to give is better than to receive, and now there's scientific studies that talk about that. The happiness is not getting the object, but being able to help someone else, that's some of the best joy in life, and yeah. it's part of your purpose in life. Yeah. And so having a whole group of people together to celebrate that and to help do more, right. it's just a great event for that. Right. And it is and, a great event. Yeah. Maybe we should talk a little bit about the event right. this year. Right, and I, I, I said the date wrong today to somebody. Is it the 26th or the 23rd? 23rd. I think Thank it's 23rd. you. Okay. Don knows. Because Don knows because Don being is honored. And I haven't figured out my dress yet, so i got to get on that. Uh, and I was just on a, an hour conference call this morning um, talking about some of the celebrities we're going to have there and performers and various things. Um, so, um, yes, it's October 23rd, which is a Sunday. But people can support the event and support ACT Today by going on our website, act-today.org, or they can go to denimanddiamondsforautism.net. I think, .net, .org, .net. Um, okay, I, I should have all this in front of me. But um, anyway, you can support the event. If you're in Southern California, uh, it's .net. Thank you, Samantha. And Samantha's Denim and Diamonds for Autism .net. You can go to the website, and we're going to have an amazing auction. We're going to be putting up some of those auction items soon. You can bid on those items whether you come to the event or not. 
and uh, it really has become uh, quite the social event in it Southern is. California. And you're going to be there on the red carpet. I'm going to be there on the red carpet, and hopefully doing Facebook Live on the red carpet. So it'll be in real time that people can see when we're mm -hmm. interviewing Don on right. the red carpet. You could be watching it on Facebook that evening on the 23rd. Okay, which will be very exciting. Uh, and and so since we talked a little bit about your law firm, in case somebody is looking for stellar lawyers in the Westlake area of uh, or, Los Angeles, California, or just Los Angeles, or, in or Los Angeles, where should they go to find out more information? Because I believe, as autism parents, we should be supporting companies that support us. And your company is a great example of somebody who's supporting us. Well, thank you for that. So our specialty is dealing with businesses and their owners. So when someone has, they're starting a company and they're getting financing and raising money, we're helping them with the documentation to do that, with some of the strategies for doing that. When they're adding uh, employees and they have the issues of how to deal with the employees, all the employment law issues, we'll deal with that. When they have an executive and they're making a deal with that person to give them stock and ownership, we'll do that. When they're buying companies, when they're being approached to raise more money to go to the next level, when they're selling their companies. So those are the things we really specialize in. And then we have support with that, with commercial real estate and finance to be able to buy and sell office buildings, shopping centers, to do the leasing, that kind of thing, for litigation relating to real estate and commercial transactions. Those are the things that we really focus on. So it's for the business owners, a growing business, maybe successful, maybe having challenges and needing to have really experienced, skilled people who came from big firms who can help them get done what they need and help not only with doing documents, but helping with the strategy and figuring out what's the best step, how do we get there. So how do they find you? Is there a website? There is a website. Okay. <laughs> NPWlaw.com. Okay, NPWlaw.com. So if you're in the market for all of those things, which are way above my <laughs> woo. Um, but if I were going to start a business, I know exactly who yeah, I'd call me too. first. Right. Me too. There you okay. go. So, um, all right. So we hope to see you on October 23rd at Denim and Diamonds for Autism at the Four Seasons Hotel in Westlake Village, California. Uh, we hope you'll support it because the money goes to grants and treatment for families around the country uh, for all kinds of things that they cannot access or afford. As such, it's our gala event, and uh, we would really love to see you there. But uh, congratulations, Don, and thank Thanks you for again. coming by to, to, today to talk to us about your award. It was my pleasure. Okay. Thank you. And we'll look forward to seeing you receive that award. It would be wonderful. <laughs> okay. All right, you guys, we're going to take a break, and then we're going to be back to close out the show after these messages. the month of September, I figured I'd show you guys how to make a task completion chart to help your kids get through the hardest parts of the day. Parents have been writing into our host, Shannon Penroth, the hardest parts of the day are waking up in the morning, after school, and getting ready for bed. Please keep in mind you can always modify the task completion chart to focus on the skills that your family needs most. The template we'll be using today to make the task completion chart you can find at facebook.com slash autism live. All right, let's get to it. The materials you'll be needing are the template, cardstock, scissors, hole puncher, glue, pipe cleaner, Velcro, and photos or images. We find it more reinforcing for kids if you use images of themselves doing the tasks that you're trying to get them to complete. So what I have here to start off are photos of myself doing all the tasks that we're going to add to our task completion chart today. The first step you're going to be doing is printing the template from facebook.com slash autism live. I have it here and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to trim at the top. We don't need that, that's just totally excess. Now that I trim my three templates, I'm going to label each one with a different part of the day that we're focusing on, such as waking up, after school, and getting ready for bed. Now that I've finished labeling the templates with the appropriate time of the day, I'm going to attach the photos that go with it. For bedtime, the tasks I chose were getting ready for school, putting away toys, putting on pajamas, and brushing teeth. Now repeat this for all the rest of the day. Now that I've added the photos to the template, I am taking this along with my heavy cardstock to hold all my tokens. I'm going to line them up and make three hole punches. I'm 
I'm going to take this pipe cleaner and attach the pages together with it. We're almost done putting this together. Next, I'm going to take my Velcro. I'm going to put them underneath each picture. And then I'm going to add four on the very edge, too. Now that I've attached the rough side of the Velcro to the template, now I'm going to take the softer side and add these to the tokens. You can use whatever you want for the tokens, whatever your child finds reinforcing. They could be stickers, images, spacemen, Pokemon, whatever they like. Before you use your task completion chart, it's really important that you do a preference assessment to see what your child finds reinforcing that day. Once you have that established, then you can tell them the rule for how this task completion chart works. So every time they get one of their tasks completed, they add a token to it. And the way the task completion chart functions is like a token economy. So after they put a token under each one of these tasks, they can trade it in for their reinforcer for the day. Now that you've made your task completion chart, hopefully your child will be able to use it on a daily basis and help them through those difficult times of the day. Well, until next time, craft on. Bye, guys. Can you see me flying by your side? Welcome back to Let's Talk Autism with Shannon and Nancy. We were just saying, uh, you know, that's Suzanne Ushinsky who mm -hmm. uh, hosts Smarty. And we haven't said, it's been a couple of weeks now, but she has a brand new baby girl. Aww, um, and we really want to send our congratulations to Suzanne. Sweet. Um, and uh, we're, we're hoping that she's going to be able to start doing some Smarties for us again. And I have oh, a good. feeling that there might be this uh, cute little baby girl in them from time to time. Oh, that would, would be, be very, great. very sweet. I wish I could remember what her baby name is, okay. but I cannot. <laughs> it, is, it escapes me right now. Um, but in any case, I, I wanted to talk briefly. You know, a lot has been going on uh -huh. uh, in the world. Uh, I was saying to somebody <laughs> that, you know, first we, uh, when it, it started when we were in New Orleans for the Autism Society Conference was the Republican Convention. It started there. Mm -hmm. Then we came back and then there was the Democrat Convention and then it seemed like there was like three days and then it was off, we were all mentally off to Rio. Yep. The Olympics were happening and now that's all over. And I feel like everybody took like a, a like a shuddering breath. Yeah. And now we're back into, into the election. The actual election is and it's you know, full bore now. Right. What is it like? Sixty three days I now. I think it's before, even less now. Is it? Yeah. And um, so tonight there is a very big deal on on NBC, mm -hmm. and we can on here on the West Coast we can watch it live on MSNBC, um, but then it will play again um, later on NBC. It's Do you know the, what time? I believe it's at 8 o'clock okay. um, uh, Eastern time, which mm -hmm. means it's 5 o'clock Pacific okay. time if you're watching it live Tape it. on MSNBC. And then I think it plays either at nine, 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock once we, you know, we get the mm -hmm. delayed feeds if you want to watch it recorded. But it's the Commander-in-Chief Forum. Mm -hmm. uh, In front of members of the military. Yes. The Armed Services. Yes. And it's on the USSS Intrepid, which yes. I attended an event there not yes. a couple of years ago with Bob and, and Suzanne, Suzanne Wright, Wright. Yes. and uh, for our Act Today for Military Families campaign and uh, program. Yes. Um, and uh, It's a pretty impressive ship, is my understanding. It is. Yeah, it's, uh, it's incredible. The it's a museum there. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and this particular forum, I've never seen anything like this, and I'm a pretty uh -huh. political animal, but apparently right. they're giving... Uh, one candidate a chance to speak and answer questions from military live, and then the other candidate. But I don't know if they've announced yet which candidate goes first or last. Okay. Um, and somebody was asking me, are they able to hear the other one speak? And I said, I don't know. And I don't believe that there's any chance to rebut. Right. But uh, yeah, it's not a debate, right? It's not a debate, but it's, it's a, a forum. forum with military, and military is a very important thing to both of us. We both mm -hmm. have family members. Mm -hmm. Both of our dads were in the military. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my husband. My brother uh, was Army, and I've got mm -hmm. a, a niece who is ex-Army and, mm -hmm. and a nephew who is Marines as we right. speak. Right. Um, so, you know, this. I think this is important to a lot of Americans, but what we haven't mentioned is who the moderator is uh, for the event. Right. Uh, and that's Matt Lauer uh -huh. of the Today Show will be right. moderating. Right. Um, and I, <laughs> And Nancy, of course, knows him a little. Uh, <laughs> well, some people don't know, maybe, that are listening. That uh, I was married to Matt. Um, he was my first husband. Reed yes. was my second husband. Yes. There's been no no other husbands. Um, <laughs> it's only the two. And so, uh, yeah, I was married to Matt when we were both... Uh, 
It, we got married in 1982, and uh, we were married for seven years, and uh, we are still very good friends. Yeah. Uh, he donates to ACT Today. As a matter of fact, Denim and Diamonds is, always features a package of a meet and greet with him. Uh, at the at the Today Show Friday concert series, and he takes pictures and goes backstage. Anyway, we are and we good friends. We should say thank you to Matt. Yeah, I don't yeah. think we say that yeah, enough. Yeah, we don't. We don't. For being he's such also a he's just been very supportive, and uh, yeah, he's got the the big job. And uh, honestly, I, you know, I, I I think of that as that that's huge because it is the huge. moderator sets the tone for a lot of what happens. Um, now this this is going to be interesting because. Uh, it's not a debate, it's a forum, right. but because it'll be live questions from military, it will be very interesting. Now I, you know, I'm a fan of Matt Lauer yeah. and um, and I've never met him, mm -hmm. but I watch the Today Show a lot and watch a lot of the interview. Uh, before, I mean, I had I had met you, but I had no idea that, mm -hmm. um, that he was your ex-husband. And I have said before on the show that a lot of times when I started doing this, because this was not my... Uh, background mm -hmm. doing this yeah. in this way. Right. Um, and so I would think to myself two things. I would think, okay, what would Oprah do and what would Matt Lauer do? <laughs> and it was like, let's take the two of those together and somewhere in the middle of all that, I'll figure out what to do as I was uh, finding. Tell him that. uh, that's <laughs> always, I still think that. Okay, so right. when I come across something that I, yeah. I don't know how to do, okay, what would Oprah do and what would Matt Lauer do? Yeah. Well, I um, can tell you one thing. He's going to be incredibly prepared. He's always been prepared from the time I shot his audition tape for a show called PM Magazine, and uh, never had I seen anybody uh, with that kind of potential. And I always said to him, it's so ironic, um, we used to watch the Today Show together, and I would say, you know, we, he would watch Brian Gumbel, who ended up becoming his best friend, yeah. and I would say, you could do that job. Mm. You could so do that job. And the other job he wanted was the Tonight Show. He's very funny. Oh. And uh, very witty. So, but nobody... Nobody prepares like yeah. Matt Lauer for an interview. Wow. He studies and studies and researches and he works his tushy off. Yeah. And that's why he's been the longest running host of the Today Show. Yeah. So I am, you know, in his court and a of big course. fan. Well, so, I'm a fan too. Yeah. So and, I'll be excited to see that tonight. Yeah, I mean, it I was will lovely too. to watch him in Rio and lovely, uh -huh. you know, lovely to watch him do all the things that he does. Right. But this, I have to say, is, uh, you know, it's like another step beyond. It is. Really... And he's gotten some criticism as being an obvious Democrat because I think of some of the things that have happened on the Today Show. But, you know, he's never come out really and said, oh, I guess he's been involved with it, with some panel discussions with the Clinton Foundation. Oh. And he's not well, a member, but they a... make everybody, uh, I think all journalists that are on a panel discussion oh. are part of the Clinton Global Initiative, become then a member. So he is not a contributor to the CGI. Uh -huh. So um, there is, you know, he is definitely uh, impartial and will be, and yes. I'm sure he will be. Well, that's one of the things I was going to say. I've been watching as he has interviewed, and, and I have seen him, uh, I'm thinking right now of an interview that I saw him do with uh, Trump, mm -hmm. and in which, you know, he doesn't back down. Yeah. I have to say, and I appreciate that, that he doesn't back down and is asking a question, and I, I know, uh, you know, he's the same way with everybody. Right. That he will be that way with, with uh, Mrs. Clinton, with Secretary Clinton yeah. as well. Yeah. So I'm, I'm interested. This yeah. is the kind of thing. I'm that kind of a right. geek that you know, uh, we don't have TV We're both trays anymore. Geeks. We, we, right? we do call, talk a lot at night about uh, yes. politics. We'll call now. each other and go. Did you see what yeah. so and so yeah. said about this? And we did do. you see the commentary on that? Right. Um, but I remember as a kid when um, we used to have TV trays. Right. And you would set oh, up yeah. the TV tray, and and my mother, like if it, if it was going to be a debate or something, my mother would have set up the TV tray so that everybody could watch. Because <laughs> my did the same thing. Yeah, that's how we became po political nerds. But so we don't have TV trays anymore. But um, we'll all be sitting and watching tonight. And I didn't realize, I you know I sometimes discount with my son being on the spectrum how much of it is going in and and but I we were we were someplace uh, a couple of weeks ago and a conversation happened and my son turned around and said well I've got a question for you and he asked the question and I was like oh he is paying attention yeah, actually He's I'll tell you attention. what White asked me one night yeah is Donald Trump a bully ooh 
Well, that's an interesting one, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And did you ask him why was he asking that? No, I just answered it and I won't tell you what I said. There you go. <laughs> I mean, you know, I think that both of us agree that, um, you know, I, I cannot say, I don't know whether um, Autism Live will, as a show, will come out and endorse um, a, a candidate. But I feel like it's really important that, for me anyway, that that the show never be about that from me. Right. But for everybody has a, you are ha you are serving. Well, right? do you talk about that? Uh, I have I have not, I'm not and we're out of time. So okay. uh, we'll so we so we can't talk about that right now. Okay. Uh, oh, five minutes. We have five minutes, so I guess well, I do have time involved. to talk about that. Uh, I will say that I was asked to participate on a panel. Right. Um, to provide information right. for not serving, uh, I, that's probably the wrong. Yeah, word, yeah. to to provide my opinion um, about education policies around individuals with disabilities, mm -hmm. um, and that request came from um, the Hillary Clinton uh, campaign, mm -hmm. and I did um, I, I did provide information mm -hmm. because I think when you're asked, right. Um, and, and let me say this. And I wanted to as well, but because yes. I had re well, recently we, Reed had passed away. Like and, a week before. Right, and I really wanted to participate in that simply because I find it vitally important that, yes. uh, that a candidate is so concerned about and has a disabilities committee. Yes, um, and, a so, policy. and a policy. That was important to me too. Yeah. And, I, and I will say this right to the camera that if, you know, if anybody from the Trump campaign would like to know my opinion, I, I'm ready with it yeah. as well. And I think there are a lot of um, people in our community that would gladly. Please. It doesn't matter who the party is, what we want to see is results, it's, right? You know, for me, it's, it's a matter of if somebody is asking what my opinion is. Mm -hmm. I will say this, my mother used to always say to me once Jem was diagnosed, because my mother was a political animal and, mm -hmm. and worked, and she would say to me, now, if somebody were to ask me, um, of the politicians that I meet, what needs to be done for autism, mm -hmm. what would you say? And I remember kind of huffing and puffing and, and, and not knowing exactly what I would say. And right. she said, you need to get that together. Right. You need to get your talking points right. together so that you would know what to say. And then you know what I did? I saw it. I, um, it was before I knew you. Uh -huh. I, Dr. Grand Pichet was going to be on Fox News. Right. And I watched, and you and were with on her. with her. And they turned and said to you, and you said this stuff. And I went, holy crap, that <laughs> woman has her answer together. And I, and I was like, how do you get to that point? How do you become that person? And and the, the, the reporter... I remember that interview. The reporter was going to move on, and you were like, oh, no. <laughs> and you went on to say, and I'll tell you another thing that people don't know, and I was like that woman I want to be her when I grow oh, up and I didn't know you, you at that point right yeah, I remember it was, I was on Fox and woo! Fox Morning News and I said yes. yeah and Washington needs to be concerned they need to be concerned now we need to have a national policy oh. on autism and we need to have a national program Girlfriend went yeah. there <laughs> and they were gonna move on and you were like no 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 one more thing and I just I was like so impressed and so between those two things I was like okay so if somebody were going to ask me and I thought through my response so when the Clinton campaign said we would like to know what it is, and I, I had my response good. thanks to you and my mom Great. that I said here, That's good here, to know. and one of them is you know I'm a I'm a big thing about you must give teachers tools. Yes. If you do not give teachers tools, right? What how we would never do that for anything right. else. Right. You have to give teachers tools. You have to give them training. It is my soapbox on which I stand as yeah. a former teacher. Yes. So that so I. I was able I think to provide that's probably one of the most important the things. And then, of course, Do laws yes. providing for ABA yes. uh, coverage under insurance. Absolutely. And we have uh, former Senator Daryl Steinberg to thank for that. Yes. I wish he would run for higher office. I've told right. him that personally. Right. Um, and, um, you know, there we do need leadership in Washington. Uh, Autism Speaks has also gone on record as saying it, is, it has been sorely lacking. There has been no national plan. There has been no national urgency. The numbers are such that this is a crisis, folks. We're which, waking up too late. Which reminds me, as we close this okay. out, the IAACC, the International Autism 
Oh, I'm not going to be able to okay. figure out what all the letters are. This week, they are doing a series of conferences and phone calls that you can call and listen into. Um, that it's the first time that they're opening it up for people to call and how listen to. How are they to. publicizing that and letting people know um, how to go on? You know, they if you were on the list, you got an email. Okay. I will put a link up to it on our Facebook okay. before the end of business okay. today so that you guys can have the dates okay. of when these things are happening right. and you can call in and listen right. in. Well, both candidates need to make autism uh, a priority. And both candidates need to tell us where they stand on it, and Absolutely. that's what I, I want to hear. Absolutely. Yeah, and Absolutely. I don't know whether that'll happen tonight. Probably it's, not. No, but in not the debates, tonight. we should hear. Let's hope we get the debates. But we oftentimes um, don't don't hear any hear it even mentioned. Right. But we want to encourage you to tune in and watch Commander mm -hmm. in Chief Forum tonight, uh, moderated by Matt Lauer.